What's up, family? Andre here. Over the last few episodes, I have talked about the number of economic reports that are key to every investor's understanding of the market and being able to predict the direction of the market. Today, I'm going to talk about two more of those economic reports, and that would be consumer spending and retail sales. But before we get started, you know the drill. Please don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscriber button, as well as the bell next to it to get updated weekly content. In the episode where I talk about gross domestic product or GDP, consumer spending makes up over 60% of the U.S. gross domestic product. It is a key metric that most investors overlook as far as the direction of the economy and how to be able to predict where there are opportunities to invest in certain sectors. But first, it's important to understand what is consumer spending. Consumer spending is the total money spent on final goods and services by individuals and households for personal use and enjoyment in an economy. A contemporary measure of consumer spending includes private purchases, durable goods and non-durable goods, as well as services. Consumer spending is often thought of as complementary to personal savings, investment spending, as well as production in the economy. The function of final goods is the result of the ultimate motivation for economic activity. The reason being is that all goods that are consumed must first be produced. Consumer spending is a major component of the demand side of the supply and demand production and is also important to the supply side of that same equation. It is ultimately the consumer's decision whether they want to spend now or in the future. But when we're referencing consumer spending, it only refers to consumers who are spending in the present moment. Income retained for future use is called savings, which is also funding investment in the production of consumer goods in the future. Many economists believe that consumer spending is the single most determinant factor in economic performance in the short run and is a primary component of overall total consumer demand. As I mentioned in my previous video regarding gross domestic product, consumer spending is the largest component of the U.S. gross domestic product and is a target of fiscal and monetary policy when looking at a microeconomic view of the United States economy. Actually, consumer spending is very important to businesses as well. The more money that a consumer spends on a particular business or corporation, the better performance that corporation or that company has. For this reason and this reason alone, it is not surprising that investors and businesses pay close attention to the direction and patterns of consumer spending. It is also not surprising, since consumer spending makes up over 60% of GDP, that there is a targeted effort by businesses and corporations to market their services and products directly to consumers to entice them to spend on a regular basis. And businesses closely watch consumer spending statistics in order to make their forecast. Moreover, governments as well as central banks closely watch consumer spending as well in order to be able to set fiscal and monetary policy. For example, currently with the Federal Reserve trying to navigate the U.S. economy through this pandemic, they have closely watched the consumer spending reports in order to be able to set direction for interest rates as well as future monetary policy for the U.S. economy. Consumer spending is often measured and disseminated by governmental agencies. In the United States, this would be the Bureau of Economic Analysis, otherwise known as BEA, which is a department within the Department of Commerce, is responsible for sending out the consumer spending data on a regular basis. Here, the Bureau of Labor Statistics conducts consumer spending surveys to measure consumer spending. This is in addition to the Bureau of Economic Analysis that puts out consumer spending reports on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. In nature, the consumer spending report is an end-stage report, meaning it only captures the final result of a consumer going out and purchasing a finished good or service. That is the demand side of the supply and demand equation. It is dramatically different than the supply side, which focuses on the make or the production of those goods and services. Retail sales is another economic report that is key to understanding the market and one that investors watch closely to get a precursor to where the economy is but going. First, let's define what is retail sales. Retail sales tracks consumer demand for finished goods of both durable and non-durable goods over a period of time. Sales is a good indicator of the pulse of the economy 
and can be a predictor of the path forward, whether that can be an expansion or contraction. Retail sales are reported by all food service and retail stores. This measurement takes into account a data sampling of all of the data in terms of retail purchases and then is extrapolated for the entire country. The leading economic indicator, a healthy retail sales figure, typically moves the markets in a positive direction. Higher retail sales is good news for shareholders of these retail companies because it means higher earnings. The economy is good for all, but lower retail sales figures, as well as a contracting economy, could result in a decrease in inflation. This action may cause investors to cycle out of equities and into bonds, which could yield higher bond prices. Retail sales captures in-store sales, catalog sales, and other avenues where durable and non-durable goods are purchased. It also encompasses a larger segment of online shopping that now has become increasingly important, especially in the pandemic, and has overtaken in-store sales as one of the most important factors in the retail sales component. The retail sales data includes data from apparel stores, department stores, furniture stores, food and beverage stores, gas stations, as well as car dealerships. As one of the broad economic indicators of the pulse of the economy, the retail sales report is one of the most timely reports of all the economic reports because the data is only a few weeks old. Individual retail companies often report their own sales figures the same time every month. That typically can incur some volatility for their stocks as investors are processing their data on a regular basis. Sales data is reported every month, but there are several periods throughout the year where you see spikes in retail sales data and is a key economic indicator to the overall comfortability for the consumer. Many of those spikes surround holidays such as Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day. But the Christmas season is by far the biggest component to the annualized retail sales data as it makes up well over 50% of many retail companies year in those six weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Major changes in price, whether inflation or deflation, can affect retail sales figures. You typically see it in two primary categories, food retailers and gas stations. Large increases in food and energy prices can cause retail sales figures to drop dramatically, which then can affect their sales numbers that are being reported on a monthly basis. Data for the retail sales report is collected by the U.S. Bureau of the Census in its monthly retail trade survey. It shows the total number of sales in the measured time period, usually the prior month. It also shows the percentage change from the last report. The report also includes a year-over-year -year sales comparison to take into account any seasonality within consumer-based retail. Sales data is often presented in two different formats, with or without auto and gas sales. The rationale for including and withholding auto and gas sales is very simple. Those two categories have major fluctuations in comparison to other retail sales and could be an outlier to any predictability of where the U.S. economy is going. These two categories fluctuate wildly in comparison to the other categories of retail sales. Car sales is not something that typically an average consumer does every single month. It's usually a one-time purchase over a period of years. The same can be said for gasoline sales. As consumers, we have no choice but to purchase gasoline for our automobiles. We don't have the luxury of delaying those purchases for future usage because we need the gasoline in order to operate our automobiles for both our personal and business use. Let's recap the key takeaways from the two economic reports of consumer spending and retail consumer sales. Spending is all spending on goods and services for both personal and household use. Consumer spending is spending on final goods and services for personal and household use. Consumer spending is a major driving force in the economy and a critical concept to economic theory. Businesses and policymakers closely follow consumer spending statistics in order to help them forecast, plan investment strategies accordingly, as well as craft and develop policy decisions. Retail sales tracks consumer demand by measuring the purchases over a specific period of time of both durable and non-durable goods and services. Retail sales data is compiled and distributed by the U.S. Bureau of the Census and includes all food service and retail stores. Accurate assessment of retail sales is vitally important 
to understanding the overall health of the U.S. economy, as it makes up over two-thirds of the gross domestic product for the United States economy. That is it. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of these two important economic indicators, consumer spending and retail sales, to the overall health of the U.S. economy. And it can be a good gauge to be able to understand the direction of the economy and help you with your investment strategy. Please don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscriber button as well as the bell next to it to get updated weekly content. Thank you for tuning in.